Welcome to the channel and welcome to Danley Boat Building where we're currently restoring this Healy 75 which you can see next to me here. In previous videos we've looked at the process that we followed for filling, fairing and priming the bottom of this boat and in this video we're going to talk about the paint finish that goes on top of that for the final top coat. So let's get going. So we're following on from primer stage and then we um, the first process to follow on from that is a 320 grit sand with the DA sander. We don't really need to bother with long boards and stuff like that. Now that we're happy that we've got the surface fair, we just want to get it nice and flat and take out the texture that is left in the primer. So that gets um, a 320 grit with a DA sander and I just work up and down in one direction and then side to side in another direction as you can see here. A little shot there of the first pass and you can see there's still a little touch of texture that's left in the um, in the primer and our aim really to, is to get a completely smooth finish here and to get rid of all that texture so we're looking for a ping pong ball finish really so i do a second pass with that again with the sander going um, in 90 degrees to the keel up and down with about a 50 percent overlap of the sanding disc and then side to side um, at zero degrees to the keel and this is roughly what the finish should look like after that i've had to just put my hand in the shot here because um, the camera really struggles to focus on this surface because it's completely smooth there's not any features to it so um, you can just about see what that looks like there and we're pretty much 100% smooth which is what we want so when we're happy with that and we've got that finish all over we wipe down the boat with some thinners to degrease it and just to clean anything off the surface that might be on there and um, get it nice and clean ahead of paint This is also a good little first indication of what the paint finish is going to look like because when you first put that thinner on there um, you get that kind of gloss and shininess come through so it's a nice little indication of what is to come when we put the paint on which is quite cool if you like that sort of thing. So there we go, boat uh, wiped down with thinners and um, we just wait for that to flash off and then we can start the first of the top coats. So right before we start the uh, the first top coat, we just give it one final tack cloth and that just picks up anything that is settled from within the air whilst we've been um, doing other prep stuff. Just a, another final check really, just to pick up any of those last little bits. We're not going too crazy on uh, levels of cleanliness at the moment because this is the first top coat and it's the bottom of the boat. We'll be a bit more conscious with things like the sides of the boat and the deck. Um, so uh, we're just working in the standard workshop here and um, you know we're relatively clean but we're not sort of too full on. So then we start rolling on the top coat we're using the Epiphanes polyurethane top coat for this and uh, the color that we've gone for with this boat is called Oyster White which is a really nice kind of off-white creamy color which is quite uh, quite close we thought to the original um, that this boat was. So um, we're just rolling that on and we're using a flocked roller for this first coat here. We'll use a slightly different roller for the final coat because what we actually found was that after we did this first coat, these uh, flocked rollers that we were using were leaving little tiny hairs in the surface. So you'll see when we take a look around the boat after the uh, first coat that there are some little hairs and bits in the surface. And um, we came to the conclusion that they were constantly coming out of the roller. So we used a bit of a better brand by the time we got to the final coat. So me and Will worked down either side of the boat with a roller each and we didn't use a brush at all. We managed to ply all of this, even all around the spray rails using these uh, rollers. They even get into an internal corner quite nicely. And uh, we don't tip it as well. We just roll it on and let it flow out, which is kind of what I preach on about with the varnish and the paints and stuff with the Epifanias products. They flow out so nicely that there's not really a need to tip them, certainly on a um, fairly flat surface like this. So there you can see the finish after the first coat. It's looking pretty nice, but um, there are a few little bits and stuff in the surface that you can see there. So um, when we get to the final top coat, we'll go a little bit extra on the um, cleanup processes and stuff. 
and we'll try and get rid of those. So the good thing with the Epifanes polyurethane paint is that if you recoat it within 24 to 48 hours, you can go straight over the top of another coat without the need for flattening down and prepping in between. So if you're trying to build a uh, film thickness and you're trying to cover any marks in the surface or just get a good thickness of paint on there, this is really good because it means you're not sanding back in between coats. So what you can see me doing here is the following day, um, I'm going straight over the top of that with another top coat with just a tack cloth in between. And we do three coats of that. So we're doing four coats on the bottom of this boat in total. And we do three of those straight after each other then we do one more prep cycle before um, the final top coat. And that takes us on to prep for the final top coat. So in this instance, we're gonna be wet sanding. So we go up a little bit on the, um, on the sandpaper grit. So we go up to a 360 grit and I'm using this Abrilon pad from Merca, which is a foam backed pad, really good for sort of wet sanding and for polishing. It's quite a nice, nice disc for that. So. That's what I'm using here and I'm spraying the surface just with standard water and a little spray bottle that I've got. Get the surface nice and wet and then just run over it with the sander, obviously with the extraction turned off because we don't want to be pulling all that up into the uh, extraction unit. Same sanding process though, we do zero degrees to the keel or 90 degrees, doesn't really matter which way you start, but we go up and down and then side to side. And you can see in the lines in the sort of paste that comes off the sanding pad that we're roughly overlapping the sanding area by 50%. So that ensures that I get a really good coverage and that I don't miss any spots. When you sand into this sort of uh, grit, it becomes a little bit more difficult to see where you've been. So you've got to follow quite a methodical process to make sure that you don't miss bits. And this 50% overlap I find works really well. So um, I'll go down one line and then as I come back, I use the edge of that line to run down the center of the sanding pad and that just means I get 100% um, coverage. That's especially a good little tip when it comes to polishing when it gets really difficult to see where you've been and haven't been. Good practice like that will just make sure that you don't miss bits without seeing them. So then it all gets wiped down with a cloth and just dried off and checked to see what the surface is looking like. And this is roughly what we're looking for. So a sort of dull sheen finish really. Um, not completely matte as it would be if you were flattened back with quite a coarse grit, but nice and smooth, good coverage of the paint. We don't want any patchiness showing through at this stage. A good sort of semi-matte, semi-shiny sort of finish um, before top coat. That is what we're really looking for. So same process again, we wipe all that down and let all the water dry completely. Then we wipe down with thinners again, just to degrease the surface. One tack cloth just before we start work. And then we're on again with rolling. So you can see we've gone a little bit more um, clean in our approach for this final top coat. So we've got a sheet just above the boat, which is gonna stop any dust coming down from the mezzanine floor that's up above this boat in my workshop or coming off the lights when we turn them off at the end of the day because these lights actually are static when they're on and when you turn them off at the end of the day they lose that static charge and any dust that's stuck to them throughout the day will drop down straight into your finish so be wary of that if you're working in an environment like this. You can also see that we're wearing Tyvek suits just to try and keep the dust on our, um, our bodies down a little bit and um, keep things a bit cleaner. As I say, when it comes to doing the deck on this boat and doing the sides of the boat, we'll go a stage further and we'll probably completely sheet out the area. But uh, for now, that's enough just to get us a good finish. And this is just the bottom of the boat, so it's not got to be absolutely perfect. But there you go, there's a shot of the final thing and um, came out really nicely, quite happy with that. Got a good finish on there. And if we compare it to what we had before we started work on this boat, it's a damn sight better than it was. We've come quite a long way, I feel, with uh, getting this thing back to shape, which is nice. And there's a little shot of it out in the um, 
kind of sunshine but a little bit grey because it's not great weather here in England at the moment but certainly outside gives you a, a bit of better light and perspective on the bottom so there we go that's how it's looking really happy with that actually so in the next video following on from this we're going to be turning the boat over again and then we're starting to do some work on the top sides which is currently underway as you can see we'll be painting the inside of the boat and i'll be showing you what products we're going to use for that and then we're doing some work on the deck structure where we're going to be um taking that out and just reinstating it to stop it moving around because it's all come loose and we've kind of found a little bit of damage in some of the parts that were um contributing to the misshapen deck that we found when we started to strip the boat down so if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button and then you can keep up to date with everything else that we're doing on this boat we'll keep posting videos as the work gets done so hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video cheers guys